The simmering war in East Ukraine saw a large-scale escalation this weekend, with five Ukrainian soldiers killed and more than 20 wounded after separatist militants tried to take over army positions. The deaths come after a sudden increase in fighting on the front line this week. Jake Hanrahan visited the separatist stronghold in the east, the Donetsk People's Republic, known as the DNR. To get into the Donetsk People's Republic, we had to pass through checkpoints controlled by separatist militants. Long queues of civilians waited to get in and out. We've been allowed permission here on condition that we have a minder. So basically, they take us to the people they want us to speak to. It's very controlled. But we've come here anyway because these guys no longer see themselves as separatists. They really believe that they're building a state, of course, with Russia's help. The separatists are making their mark. The flags are everywhere. They've swapped Ukraine number plates for their own unofficial ones. And they've even renamed McDonald's Donetsk Mac. They took us to the outskirts of their territory, where they wanted us to see the toll of the Ukraine war. How are you? You live here? Wow, OK. Can we go in? Это Захарченко, наш ДНРовский этот самый, как его, глава. Он умница, нам помогает и в пенсии помогал, и помог, помог повышал. Ой, это не Захарченко. Он, да? А, вот так. Он, да, Вова? А что такой некрасивый тут получился? Despite her adoration for the DNR leader, Lubov wasn't quite sure if the man on the front of the paper was him or not. It began to feel like she might have been told what to say. So is that a normal reaction for people living out here in these kind of conflict areas in the DNR? Yeah, you can enter in uh, um, every house and it will be the same because the people who live under shellings daily and uh, understand what is mean uh, bombing, dying, uh, understand better what is life. All of the civilians we spoke to were anti-Ukraine. We couldn't be sure if this came from a genuine love for Russia and the separatists, or due to the control they seem to have over the population there. We're on the way to a different front line now. We were taken there by the DNR again, by our aides again. Um, they're leading us there, and it just so happened to be that they had a little checkpoint here where they were giving out food to the locals. And we spoke to one woman the second we finished talking to her, and they thought the cameras were done. Everything got backed up and they left, so they quite clearly stayed in this. Before we came to the DNR, we spoke to an informant who lived in Donetsk as it was taken over. He since handed his information over to Ukraine intelligence and says everything in the DNR is strictly controlled. Нет никакой свободы слова, как бы. Так человек обычный на улице там, он, он ничего тебе не расскажет. Он закроется, а так как в Советском Союзе только в 10 раз жёстче. Журналисты, как бы, которые приезжают туда, где сделают какое-то событие, выставку, там всё приукрасят. И вот как хорошо живут люди в ДНР. Говорят, это они называют это русская весна, но на самом деле это была криминальная весна, потому что русские пришли и дали оружие криминальным элементам, которые начали отжимать машины, отжимать бизнес, отжимать дома. Пока там будут русские, мира не будет. The toll of the conflict has completely destroyed many areas in Donetsk. The separatists claim not to be breaking the current ceasefire. They say it's the Ukrainians who fire at them. Whilst both sides are guilty of this, international monitors report that most of the violations start from the DNR. Сейчас начнутся, вы слышите? Направление за зеленкой. 
прямо перед зеленкой и левее. Some movements yeah. of uh, soldiers. And that, is that incoming? Крупнокалиберные пулеметы и гранатометы. Мы, у нас приказ, мы в одностороннем порядке не открываем огонь. У нас маслом покрыты пулеметы, мы не стреляем. It's close. In the time we spent in the Donetsk People's Republic, we never quite sure what was real and what was just for show. <laughs> 